Hey, what's going on guys? It's Lazy Gunner here, back again with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a all new AMD PC build that includes AMD's new Ryzen 5 3600, as well as the new Radeon RX 5700 GPU. In this build guide, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly what parts to get, as well as the benchmarks. So if you just wanna check out the benchmarks, you can check out in the comment section below for the timestamps and you can skip right ahead. All the parts found in this video can be purchased off Amazon from the links in the description and the cost of this build can set you back anywhere from $800 to $900 depending on what options you choose. My exact configuration was around $900 but of course that can be brought down depending on your budget. So let's just get right into it starting off with the CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600. For $200 you're getting quite a bit of performance with 6 cores and 12 threads, a base clock of 3.6GHz and a boost clock of 4.2GHz, which are both higher clock speeds than the previous Ryzen 5 2600. The CPU also has the new Zen 2 processor architecture which brings down the size of the transistor from 12 nanometers to 7 nanometers, which means that they can fit more transistors in the same amount of physical space. Now, compared to Intel's options, this is most comparable to the i5-9600K, which is not only more expensive, but they're still stuck on the 14 nanometer technology and doesn't have hyper-threading, so it has 6 cores and 6 threads, which means lower performance, and it even draws more power than the Ryzen CPU. Looking at some benchmarks, it's pretty clear which the superior CPU is, especially in multi-core performance. And I would recommend the CPU not only because it's powerful right out of the box, but also because it's overclockable and future-proof, which enables for various upgrades in this build. The processor also comes with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which means you don't have to spend a cent on aftermarket cooler. However, if you do want a better cooler, my recommendation is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition as it looks very clean and does a very good job on thermals without breaking the bank, coming in at only $34. Moving on to the motherboard, I've gone with the MSI B450A Pro. Now when choosing motherboards for the new 3rd gen Ryzen CPUs, you have to be careful when it comes to BIOS compatibility. The X570s work right out of the box, but with the B450s it might not ship with the latest BIOS, so that's something you need to consider. However, with this motherboard, as well as a few you're seeing on screen right now, supports something called BIOS Flashback, which basically means you can update the BIOS without a CPU installed. All you gotta do is plug in a USB and click on the BIOS Update button. If you're not sure which motherboards have this feature, just look on the side I.O. panel, and if it has this button, then it indeed does have the BIOS Flashback feature. The motherboard comes around at $90, which is pretty good price, all things considered. It has an M.2 slot and it supports two-way crossfire for a dual GPU setup, and it doesn't have any flashy colors or RGB, so you get that clean aesthetic look. For RAM, I was able to get 16 gigs of the Corsair Vengeance LPX memory. Now you can go for 8 gigs if your budget is tight, and for most games, that's perfect, and you can just get another 8 gigs later on. But if you have the extra money to spend, 16 gigs is the way to go, especially for upcoming games that take advantage of RAM usage. In terms of speed, I recommend anything over 2800 MHz, and in this case, we're using 3000 MHz, which is both supported by the Ryzen CPU and motherboard. So for storage, I'm using an SSD along with a traditional hard drive and the SSD is the Kingston A400 120GB SSD. Now this is to install Windows, which by the way, link in the description, you can pick up for around $13 from SCD key. But the SSD is also meant for a few other apps and games. For secondary storage, I'm using the Western Digital 1TB hard drive, coming in at only $43, you really can't complain. This drive is meant for any other files, videos and pictures etc. You can instead of using the hard drive along with the SSD, just get a larger SSD like a 1TB SSD as they are pretty cheap compared to previous years, so that also might be a better option. Now moving on to the other main component of this build, the graphics card, the AMD Radeon RX 5700 8GB. Now this card is a bit overkill for 1080p gaming and is perfect for 1440p gaming on high to ultra settings on most games, but even if you are on 1080p gaming, I would still recommend this graphics card because one, you get higher frame rates and two, if you ever do want to upgrade to 1440p gaming, you don't have to get another GPU. The RX 5700 also has the new 7nm architecture and has GDDR6 compared to GDDR5 memory which basically means that you get a higher memory bandwidth. The card retails for $350 and it is the reference model design which means you only get one fan 
So if you do wait for the custom versions to come out with dual or even triple fans, you're going to see better thermals. But that doesn't mean that design is bad. I actually prefer this clean look. But depending on when you're watching this, it probably is a better idea to get those third party cards. So let's take a look at some benchmarks of this exact build with the GPU and CPU, but we'll also be looking at how it stacks up with the RTX 2060, which is Nvidia's GPU at a higher price and only has 6 gigs of memory. Moving on to the power supply, I've gone with the Thermaltake 600 watt PCU. It's nothing special, but for $48, it can definitely power this PC without any problems. And you could even get away with a 500 watt power supply, but that might just be cutting it. Last but not least, we have the case. Now this part is entirely up to you guys to decide and I've gone with Deepcool's Matrix 55 mid tower case. It's a pretty solid case with RGB light strip up front, tempered glass panels on the side and front, which is interesting, but the main attraction is that $50 price tag. Now it doesn't come with any pre-installed fans, but personally, I don't think that's a bad thing because now you have the freedom to choose your own fans and I recommend getting the Corsair Air Series 120 mm cooling kit, but of course that does bring up the price. So a good alternative is the Fantix P300 case for $60 and that does come with pre-installed fans. With that being said that pretty much wraps up this build. Tell me what you guys think down below and what budget I should do next. Remember all the links to buying everything in the video are in the description and are regularly updated. So please leave a like if this video helped you in any way and as always thanks for watching.